All right, guys, we are working number 238 on page 935. And this is going to be a Boyle's Law equation or Boyle's Law problem. Now, in the problem, it goes ahead and tells us, it says that a sample of neon gas occupies a 2.8 liter, it occupies 2.8 liters at 1.8 atmospheres. And it says, what will the volume be at 1.2 atmospheres? So in this problem, the first thing we have to do is we got to write down what the problem gives us in the very beginning. Okay, now it gives us our V1. So the volume that we're going to be starting with is 2.8 liters. And it gives us a pressure of that gas, the P1, which is 1.8 atmospheres. Okay? And it wants to know what volume will it be. So it wants to know V2 at a pressure, so we know that P2 equals 1.2 atmospheres of pressure. So we have down our given, what it gives us. Now we need our equation. Our equation that we're going to be using is the pressure of 1 times the volume of 1 equals pressure of 2 times volume of 2. Okay, we need to solve for V2. So to do that, algebraically, since we're multiplying here, we'll divide by P2. And that'll give us our equation that we're going to use, which is volume of 2 equals pressure of 1 times volume of 1 divided by pressure of 2. To work this out, all we have to do is plug it in, V2 equals P1 is 1.8 atmospheres. Guys, units are incredibly important here. Make sure we're writing our units. And our volume is 2.8 liters. And we're dividing all of that by P2, which is 1.2 atmospheres of pressure. And we see that in this, how we have it set up, since atmospheres on the numerator and on the denominator, those can cancel out. So we go ahead and plug this into our equation, and we have V2 is going to equal 4.2 atmospheres. Okay, we see that what happens, um, or not atmospheres, sorry guys, that should be liters. Atmospheres canceled. So what we see has happened is this is 4.2 liters that we went down in pressure, so we had to go up in volume. Remember that pressure and volume have been inverse relationships. Now, the next problem that we're going to work is on page 935 again, and we're going to work the one uh, number 239. Now, the question says, to what pressure would you have to compress 48 liters of oxygen gas at 99.3 kilopascals in order to reduce its volume to 16 liters. Now, first thing we have to do is write down our given. What does it give us? Well, our first given is we have a volume of one which equals 48.0 liters. And it tells us that that, is, that oxygen gas is held at a pressure of one, so P1, which is 99.3 kilopascals. Okay, and then it tells us it wants to know what would the pressure have to be if we had the volume and we reduce the volume all the way down to 16 liters. So we're searching for P2. Okay, the equation that we're using is the same equation we used in the last problem, which is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Okay, we're solving for P2, so to get that by itself, we divide by V2. And we see that V2s will cancel, and P2 will be by itself. So our equation, written out the way we want it, will be P2 equals P1 V1 all over V2. Now, in the last problem, we talked about uh, the relationship, the proportionality of it. Okay, here 
We'll do the same thing before we work the problem. Now, we have a volume, okay? And our volume is decreasing significantly. So if we have an inverse proportion, these guys are inversely proportional pressure and volume. So what should we see happen to the pressure? Well, if we decrease volume, we should increase pressure. So let's go ahead and plug everything in and see what happens, okay? Pressure of one is 99.3 kilopascals. Remember, units are really important. And we're multiplying that by a volume of 48.0 liters. And dividing all of that by 16.0 liters. Okay, we see that liters are going to go ahead and cancel for us. Liters cancel because it's on the numerator and it's on the denominator. So what we see happening, we'll have a unit of kilopascals, which is a pressure, which is what we want. And we'll have a pressure of 297.9 kilopascals, which we should have be a sense volume went down, pressure should go way up. That's what happened. We did the problem correctly. Now, guys, we're going to go ahead and work some Charles's Law's equations. Okay, and we're going to work on page 936, number 243. Now, the question says a balloon full of air has a volume of 2.75 liters at a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. What is the balloon's volume at 45 degrees Celsius? So, first thing we have to do, just like in every problem, we have to write down what it gives us. Okay, first thing it gives us is a volume, or a V1, of 2.75 liters. And it gives us a temperature, or T1, of 18 degrees Celsius. Okay, it wants to know what is the balloon's volume. So we're looking for V2 if it's at a temperature of, so T2, of 45 degrees Celsius. Now, before we go any farther, we need to make sure that we have our temperature in Kelvin because we cannot have um, a Celsius temperature. It's got to be in Kelvin. So we'll go ahead and add 237, not 237, 273 to the Celsius temperatures, which will give us a T1 of 291 Kelvin and a T2 of 318 Kelvin. Can't have any negative numbers. Now, next thing we do, write down our equation. And our equation is V1 all over T1 equals V2 all over T2. Got one equal sign. There we go. Okay, now we are solving for V2. So to get V2 by itself, we'll multiply both sides by T2. You could do the same thing um, if you cross multiplied, but right here it's just easier to do this, so we'll go ahead and do that. So our equation before we plug everything in is going to be, because we see that that cancels, so we're going to have V2 equals T2 times V1 all over T1. Ooh, that was a bad looking V. Alright, so we'll go ahead and plug everything in. V2 equals T2 is 318 Kelvin. V1 is 2.75 liters. And we're going to divide all of that by our T1, which is 291 Kelvin. Plug that all into a calculator and we get V2 should have a volume of 0 .0 liters, 0 3.0 liters. Now, we look at this and we see that, well, we had an increase of temperature and so we had an increase of volume. So right here we have a direct relationship, directly proportional. As one goes up, the other goes up. So volume and temperature directly proportional and we go up in the volume. 